Hello, and welcome to another vlog. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about the Progressives and the Mark Rakers, as well as we're going to be talking about um, Roosevelt and everything he did during his presidency. Let's begin. So, of course, we've been talking about this whole time, rapid industrialization and after the Civil War and how it all leads to this. And again, we have the industrialization. We have the robber barons against Carnegie and your Rockefeller. We have the seas growing. Again, the sanitation was horrible, as well as the factories and the factories' conditions were horrible. We also have a lot of corruption going on because of Carnegie and Rockefeller and so on, and they're so greedy. Um, and again, you can see that the city grows as well. That leads to slums, that leads to these political machines, Boss Tweed and so on. And of course the factories lead to a lot of sweatshops where they don't have a lot of good conditions and not a lot of good pay. So of course the progressives are going to come in and they're going to change all that. They're going to say that we want a better conditions for working and so on, okay? Um, there was the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire. Talked about that in class. Um, but who are the progressives? Again, the progressives are basically going to be people that believe in moderate political change. They're not looking for anything extreme, just things to be changed. And when they do, it is going to be through government action. Not through violent action, but through government action. Um, and that's where we get a lot of this from here. So, of course, a lot of them are middle class reformers. They're not the dirt poor, and they're not um, any of the rich. There are a lot in the middle class. Um, on top of that, you have muckrakers. The muckrakers are going to be investigative journalists who write about corruption and in business and pol politics to bring reform. And these muckrakers are going to be raking through the muck to get the truth to give to the public. Okay, And that includes McClure's Magazine. also includes Ida Tarbell. But first off, we're going to talk about McClure's Magazine. Again, started by Samuel McClure. It specializes in muckraking journalism. That's all it does. Journalists include Ida Tarbell and Lincoln Steffen. Both wrote for that magazine. Okay, Ida Tarbell takes on Standard Oil when she does the octopus. What ends up happening is she sees what happens with Standard Oil. She sees that it's, it's got its monopoly through often very illegal business practices. In fact, it would purchase competitors. Again, her father was one of these competitors. He got His oil company got bankrupt because of Rockefeller and Standard Oil, and he committed suicide. This is why she starts again against Standard Oil. She sees that, really, there's some shady deals with the railroads, with Vanderbilt's railroads. She also sees that them destroying um, an oil finery in Buffalo just to get that because it is a competitor. And again, this is crazy. This is what goes on during this time. And again, Ida Taubell investigates this. And when she does, she lets the people aware of what Rockefeller's really doing. And eventually, it leads to the breakup. She actually did make a difference. She leads to the breakup of Rockefeller's Standard Oil. Now, Lincoln Steffen, very important as well, he publishes books focusing mainly on city corruption, like grafts, like bribes, and so on. As well as, you have Giffy, Gifford Pinchot. Again, advocated for the forests to be preserved. It was part of the Progressive Party as well. All right, so now we move on to uh, Roosevelt. Okay, Roosevelt and his square deal. Now, with Roosevelt, he becomes president because, remember, McKinley gets assassinated. Okay, when he gets assassinated, Teddy Roosevelt becomes the youngest president of all time. And, of course, he starts his bully bullpen, as he calls it, which is basically just a platform to publicize important issues and seek support for his policies, which he does and is very successful at. With that, we do have his square deal. That's his 1904 campaign slogan when he runs for re-election. It is meant to balance the interests of the business, the consumer, and the labor. He wanted a square deal for all. Remember that. Remember this right here. You want to regulate business? He wants to protect the consumer? He wants to promote he public health and safety? And of course, he wants to improve working conditions, which he does all of these. Um, to regulate business, he trust busts. Trust busting. And Roosevelt went after these companies that had monopolies that hurt the public's interest. And these companies violated the Sherman Antitrust Act. So, of course, he's going to try to break up those monopolies. Okay? These two acts that come out of this, the Elkins Act, which, again, everyone had to pay the same rates for shipping, no more rebates. And, of course, the Hepburn Act, where the government, more or less, sets the railroad rates, not... Vanderbilt, because again, it was getting out of control. Now, speaking of getting out of control, it's the actual public health and safety of foods. Believe
believe it or not, companies sold products as wonder drugs. They sold drugs at drug stores that you could just buy across the counter. They actually put drugs in certain things like Coca-Cola. They had cocaine in Coca-Cola. And the reason why I was saying they got you addicted, um, as well as you have these wonder pills like Carter's Little Liver pills. Um, and of course, you have things like cocaine toothache drops. Again, kind of crazy, but that's what it was back then. There was no regulations. And so, of course, the solution was to make regulations. And they do through the Pure Food and Drug Act, which forbade the making of food and medicine containing harmful ingredients. Again, they had to have an ingredient label now. They had to show that. You know, they couldn't make chemists make food look fresh with other chemicals. And another thing that comes out for to protect the consumer is The Jungle. It's written by Upton Sinclair. Again, it's a book about immigrants working in a Chicago factory, uh, meat factory, and it shows these terrible and unsanitary conditions of these factories. Again, this meat scandal is huge. It puts out what exactly is really going on behind the scenes. And so, of course, we have the Meat Inspection Act, where the government has to inspect meat shipped across state lines and shipped out of the factories. So, again, we have the United Mine Workers to help improve working conditions. We have a strike with one of the most you know, coveted things right now in America, which is coal. Coal runs the trains, coals run steamships, and so on. Coal even still heats some houses in 1902, so coal is important. And one of the biggest mines goes on strike, and when they do, the owners refuse to negotiate. So Roosevelt encouraged what we call an arbitration. He says, when, and what an arbitration is, is when you have two sides, okay, that really won't settle anything. They want to grab in a third party to help settle the dispute, and that's what they do. That third party is Roosevelt and the government. And so what ends up happening is, the solution is the workers' wages go up, they do get a shorter day, and owners don't recognize the miners' union anymore. So everybody wins, and of course, America gets coal. It's a square deal for all. Okay, there's the United Mine Workers, as you see. Now, one big thing was Teddy Roosevelt was huge for protecting the environment. He loved the environment, again, even though he was a big hunter. So he created the first national park, which we know today is Yellowstone. He set aside 200 million acres, okay? And he was a protector of the environment. With the Newlands Reclamation Act, it allows money from sales of public lands to be used to reclaim even more land. And he makes a National Park Service to help supervise these national monuments and the parks themselves. And of course, he, his most famous foreign policy is this Panama Canal. Again, it's an easier way to get from the Atlantic to Pacific Ocean, and he realizes the power of the U.S. in Central America. Now, he wasn't really big on civil rights. However, um, he did um, promote Booker T. Washington. Booker T. Washington was um, the founder of the Tuskegee Institute that provided technical education for African Americans, as well as he was a supporter of the NAACP, which was by W.E.B. Du Bois, um, as you see here. And again, that NAACP will be around for quite a while. The origin of the teddy bear was from Teddy Roosevelt. Again, remember he did not shoot the cub. Um, and again, these are the small pictures of this beautiful national park. Again, this is all that he saved, including Yosemite National Park. Again, I hope this helps you out. Good luck on the test, and I'll see you in class.